Hello everyone, welcome to the second episode in my Let's Code series where we are building a blog with light switch on the back end and HTML5 and JavaScript and all the good buzzwords on the front end. In episode one we built what will be kind of, will be basically the back end for the entire system. Um, so here we are with our application and we can hit run just to see how it looks currently. Um, couple of test posts that I put in just a moment ago before I started this this recording and we can tap on our posts see exactly what's in there uh, we can add new ones and so on so all looking very good so let's focus on the front end today and to do that what we're going to do is we're going to go to the Lightstitch project and get out of the logical view which is this where it's kind of this nice sanitized view of the world and switch to the file view which shows you what's really going on and in file view, you can go and actually mess around and work with a lot lower level systems in LightSwitch. So, uh, one of the first things I want to do, since we are here in the file system thing now, let's just update the light switch to the latest version. Uh, so to do that, we can go to references, I think. Yeah, manage new get packages. Um, it will connect. Provided my internet's working, which it wasn't about three minutes ago. It should connect and tell us what updates are. Oh, look at that, we've got updates. Um, if you had update all or you tried to have jQuery, it's going to blow up in our face because LightSwitch doesn't support version 2. Um, we currently have 1.8 installed, but we actually only want to go up to 1.9. So the trick here is to just update the LightSwitch client that will update jQuery mobile, which will pull in the right version of jQuery for us and so on, and we'll be quite happy. So let's hit update and accept and that will pull down everything lots of new things for us to play with awesome um if we ran this now i think it should break actually uh let's go kick here and tell it uh to start i think it probably all explodes oh yeah look see it is exploding that's good because, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Stop it. Visual Studio, you're in the way. Go away. Um, I want okay. Anyway, it's all exploding. It's all gone pear. <sighs> the reason it's gone pear is because we updated the files, but we haven't updated this default to HTM, which controls the page. And this is a great little page. Like, we can actually go in here and, like, edit it so we can change, like, the tiles. So, like, let's code, blog, admin. Copy that into the clipboard because I want that for later. And you'll see we've got some CSS here. Um, you can, the light switch has a dark theme as well, so you can switch to the dark theme. So but we'll keep on the light theme. So I want light theme version whatever. So we'll make that change. Then we've got the Microsoft light switch customizations, which is this one for the light theme. So if you want to switch to the dark theme, which is all like black and like a darker blue, uh, you just change the light to dark there. As this little comment will help you remember. You know, there's not many times comments are useful, but that's one of the better ones. So we're jQuery mobile structure. jQuery mobile structure. Minified 1.3.1. Let's grab that and change that. And Microsoft Light Switch CSS. Oh, minified. Um, that pop-up is from GhostDoc trying to fix all the spelling. Hey, look at that spelling mistake. Cool. Maybe I should look a bug at Microsoft to fix this spelling in the comments. Maybe not. Um, all right, so let's go down here. Um, it's going to get the globalized min, whatever that is, from the ASP.NET CDN. Um, interesting. And then it's got WinJS and jQuery is in here. So it's one point. 8.2, so we change it to 1.9.1. Once again, we'll swap this out. jQuery Mobile is here. We want to switch to the min one. Uh, data JS hasn't updated. R the, gen the two generated ones are automatically built by LightSwitch, so those won't be impacted by this. And then we have the Microsoft LightSwitch update. Uh, so that should all be in there. And I don't think we'll see any differences when we do this. Um, paste that in there. And here is that, and where is that piece of text? By the way, if you didn't know, there's a 
there we go. Uh, that's what I was doing there. Um, if you copy anything in Visual Studio, it's like text there, right? You can hit Control V and paste, right? Uh, but if you copy something else, like icon, you can hit Control V or paste. If you copy icon and hit paste, it pastes icon, right? But if you hold Control Shift and V, you can toggle through what's in the clipboard for pasting. It's like this ridiculously unknown to like little feature, but it works quite well. Right, so everything's there. So let's run this. Everything looks the same. Good. All working. But we should be on all the new stuff now, which is also good. Long live, uh, you know, NuGet and open source libraries, I guess. Uh, so I'm going to start building our page. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to web. And this is in the server side because this is actually where everything runs. Um, this is also how you can change the default browser. So, you know, like I keep coming up here to the top and saying run. And it will launch in, in IE. The reason I do that is because if I go down here, I can choose a browser. We can say choose Chrome. But if I run it from here, it explodes. I have no idea. I've never looked at why it does. But if you just go back to the top, then it's happy. It's like this. I think it's missing. I think it's missing some sort of weird, like there's some extra build trick. You can't start. You can start that one then. Or maybe it needs that path on it. I don't know. There's something it wants. But it still runs in Chrome, so that's fine. Um, but if you do need to change the browser, as I often want to with Light Switch, um, you can do that. You can even run in Page Inspector if you really want everything in Visual Studio. Why? I don't know, but you can. Uh, none of the Page Inspector features help Light Switch. So let's go in here, add a new folder. Uh, we'll call it Blog under Web. And here is where I'm going to put everything. Um, and what I want to do in here is I'll add another folder of scripts because I want to bring some scripts in. Um, I could do this with NuGet. It's like right click. Actually, that's what we will do. So I want jQuery. I want, for my, you know, light switch might be stuck on 1.9, but I'm not going to be. So we'll hit install. <laughs> Look at that. And see, it conveniently went and put it in scripts for me. In the wrong scripts, but fine. Whatever. We'll just move it there. Bye. So we have our scripts folder, uh, and now I want some, an HTML page. I really want the front end to be a, like as really pure HTML JavaScript. Uh, so let's call this index.html. Um, let's get rid of that. I'll show you some cool tricks uh, here while I do this. One of the best things if you are doing web dev, if you go to tools and extensions, get the web essential stuff by the awesome Mads who works at Microsoft. And it adds in all kinds of awesome things. One of them it adds in is called Zen coding, so I can do HTML5 tab. Woo. Did all kinds of HTML E stuff for me. Um, and then what I can do in here is I could type like div, which will work with snippets, like a div like that, or div C, uh, which didn't work. Tab. Yeah. I don't know why that div didn't work. Div, tab, tab. Hey, weird. Something funny happening there. Div, space. Yes, do that one. Snippet. Maybe I expand the snippet with a keyboard with a mouse. Control K X, insert snippet, HTML, div C. There we go. You can have like divs like that. I don't use these, which is why I've never noticed that it's not working. Um, what I do is this. So I use Zen coding. So I want a header tag, H1 tag at the top. And I want some text name. Welcome to the blog. Uh, tab, and it'll do that for me. Yeah, we can go down here. Then what I want to do in here, um, I want to add, I want to bring my JavaScript in here, because I want my JavaScript at the bottom. So we drag jQuery in there. And I really want a div in here. Div dot um, posts. And you see how it's just like nice and simply it's a Zen coding idea. It works really well. Um, now, what I want to do in here is add a new JavaScript file because this is going to be all the logic to talk to my MySQL server. So we'll call this, uh, I don't know, let's call it Reader in memory of Google Reader, which no longer is with us, sadly. And what we can do is we can drag on jQuery. And so we get this little reference thing in here. And now Visual Studio knows all about jQuery. And because I brought it down with NuGet, I've got the IntelliSense. Okay. All these awesome little helper things. So let's do 
a namespace for this. Um, actually, we'll build this as a. Do I want this as a jQuery plugin or a standalone thing? I'm gonna use jQuery. Hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna build this as a jQuery plugin. Um, so the first parameter of my f unnamed function will be dollar for jQuery, and then undefined will be the second parameter, and then I'll do the body, and then I'll I missed a phrase there, and then I'll close that, then I'll do an open brace, and I can pass in jQuery like that, and I don't pass in a parameter for the second one, so this is properly undefined. The reason to do this, am I missing something? Oh, there we go. I think I have an extra brace. I don't think I need that many braces. The reason to do this is because other JavaScript libraries could steal um, what the dollar symbol and the undefined keyword do. Um, and so by doing it this way, there is no way for other JavaScript libraries to do it. It's just, it's isolation. It locks you down. Uh, then you strict. And if you don't have that at the top of your JavaScript, you suck. Uh, part of the coolness of doing it this way with this sort of wrapping it in a function means that everything, I it's all like a namespace in .NET. So this use strict won't break other things because maybe, I don't know, something in jQuery doesn't use strict or uh, something else. And you know, we use strict and then we blow up. And Visual Studio is smart enough, like at this point, to know that strict is on. So even though it, like, I was going to say, oh, it's smart enough, and look, it doesn't have evil, which it normally would have, and there it does have it. Yeah, it, it's smart enough to know it's on, except when I'm demoing. Um, the one feature that came to mind early on. Anyway, so what I want to do now is I want dollar dot fn for functions, and I want to create a function. Uh, Let's, let's just do like um, a simple thing of reading all the blog posts, or just one blog post. I kind of have an idea like of making this have the awesome infinite scroll feature that browsers, that low cool websites have nowadays. Um, yeah, let's just like load. Uh, let's just load all blog posts for now. Function. Do, 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 do. And jQuery, and I might be want to chain this, return this, the end, there we go. And now I've got a cool little jQuery plugin stub, and probably someone who really cares about this stuff knows what's going on way better than I do, is yelling at me for doing it so badly. We'll drag that on, and I can now type, it was a snippet for this script, dollar dot, and I always used to do this, it's like document, find the document object, find the ready, then do this function on ready. Um, until my friend William showed me that you don't need that, you can just do that. This makes a cleaner jQuery. Cool, so on ready, then what we want to do is say dollar uh, div dot posts. See that kind of thinking in Zen coding? When I type that, means that I keep thinking that way there, which is so cool. Dot load all blog posts. I should have made that lowercase l. We'll fix that up. Naming standards are important, people. Cool. Uh, so we have that there. Um, let's just actually see how that looks. So we'll go back to the top and hit run. And it didn't run. I think this is because it's like HTML client should be here. Or not. I don't know. Fine light switch should be like that. Uh, don't help me out. At the top. F5. There we go. Cool. So there's the normal thing. Now if we take this away and we go web whack blog whack index dot html which is rebuilt there's how blog cool and everything's loading everything's working we're very very happy so that's looking good so now what we need to do is get the data and another advantage of being of this is I can copy the URL because I want to light switch is built on top of awesome technologies one of them being O data that was the longest O I've ever said Okay, so what I want to do here, if we have a look, yeah, I don't care about that. Our database is called application data. So if I go here, every time we create a database or add one in, we get application data dot fvc. See, it matches, it matches. Well, I, I keep, that's the second time, that's the second episode. I did in the first episode, I pointed to the screen, expecting you to see what I'm pointing at. I need to stop that. Right, so there's blog post set, comment set, and it's the same here. And so I could do like, blog posts 
set like this, and we get data back. This is very cool. And because and so this is just O data. And O data for those you don't know, uh, O data. We'll go in here. Is this O data at all? And it's like this open standard protocol of sharing data and structuring RESTful like services uh, that Microsoft and a whole bunch of other people all work together on. So that's quite cool. So what I can do with this now is I can say dollar dot get JSON, paste that in there. Um, what I want to do, because I know this is going to run under the same place, so we'll do that, block reset, comma, and I don't care about that. We'll just do function and the result, the blog posts. And I keep, you see me running a lot of C sharp recently. Now I'm all my braces are in the wrong place again. Right, so here we are. All right, so now what we need to do, we can type blog posts, and there's no intelligence sense about that. Sucks. Um, uh -huh. Control F5. See, I'm getting. I just noticed they're on different URLs. Um, block that one. Cool. F12. Script debugging. Because I actually want to go and play with what that is and see what the data structure is. I can't remember this stuff off the top of my head. Um, reader. Um, you haven't updated. Control F5. Control F5. Did I not save? Save all. Come back here. Control F5. You're just messing with me today. It was like this. We're friends. Okay. So let's do this again from the start. Yeah, you'll hear me do do to do, do a lot because I like that for some reason. Uh, I, that's generally how I code as well. I, I make silly sounds when I code. Start debugging. Put a breakpoint in there. Oh, ah, Visual. Fine, Visual Studio will use you. I don't want to use you for this. I like browser tools for this stuff. Refresh. Oh look, yes. No, now we're in here. JavaScript console. There we go. Make it bigger. Yeah, hopefully that's as bad on the video as it is for me, but it's like light grey and white. Uh, Alright, so I should have... This I don't like this. Blog posts. I miss all my cool tools. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. Come run. There we go. Alright, so what's in there? Uh, it's an array with two ob objects in it, and each object like that. So this will be the array. Come back here. I was reading. And then we have all that stuff there. Um, cool. I don't know what I'm doing with this, but that's cool. Hmm. The way that this is written, um, I'm not going to be happy about doing this, but let's just get it so it shows the post titles there. So we'll do all the post titles. Uh, so it'll be. So. Um, I want to. Do a for each on this dollar dot each um, in blog posts function and it's index and post and then what I want to do is document uh, var div it's equal to document dot create element div please don't make me look like an idiot now, but there we go. Another cool Visual Studio feature is like it knows about the HTML. If you use document like create element, it knows what it's doing. So like you'll see here, I don't have, uh, I have a data source and a Microsoft region overflow, but if I change this to an image tag, I suddenly get a source. So cool that. Yeah, div div. I'm not happy with this. Like I actually want to return a data structure back and or some way of like not making it this is for me is like logic, and I don't want it necessarily bound to updating the UI specifically. Like this should load everything, but you know, for now we'll just do it this way. So class dot add 
title and then div dot content div dot text inner text there we go um, should be equal to blog uh, no blog what do we call it post post dot and what is it called title convenient title windows key minus to move to like you I didn't you saw I went here and then went that that's windows key minus uh, Windows key, control minus, and if I do control sh shift minus, it goes forwards, and minus back, forwards. Good for navigating Windows like that. Um, and then I want to say this dot, um, hmm, I'm surprised that it doesn't know what this is at this point. This dot, yeah, append, that's what I was thinking it should find. Uh, weird. Oh, actually, it might not know what this is at this point. Uh, we should say var um, element is equal to this. Because this, that scope might change. Element dot append div. That I think should work. I, <coughs> I have no idea. I've never tried this before. It's always f ridiculously fun trying this crazy stuff. Uh, so let's go and run this. Right, web blog index. Ooh, undefined, undefined. Look, we got two records back, but they're both undefined, which is bad. Um, I think the reason it's undefined, if we change it here, save, refresh. Um, why are you undefined? Let's just put a breakpoint there. Come back here, F5. Okay, fine, you don't want to do that. You don't want to be my friend. Let's come here. Right there. You want to start? No, you don't want to be my friend there either. Would whoever wants to be the debugger, please be the debugger. Seriously? Fighting tooling. But you're not hitting the bright point here. Okay, you probably will this time. There we go. Post. Should we expand that? Post set. Interesting. Post. Uh, JavaScript console. Um, post. Why is that? Oh, it's probably not. It's probably post from uh, the, the 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 JSON stuff. Um, I probably have tried to steal their variables. I don't think while we're here, what I think the problem is, in any respect. Oh, it should be capital T for title, that's fine. Alright, uh, so let's fix this up. We'll change that back to capital T for title. And we'll just change this to blog post. And we'll come down here and put that back in there. And let's run this again. And undefined, undefined, so. It doesn't like it when I hit F5 there. It's like, maybe I can do this so it's just smaller. Seth has a startup project always. F5 always means that. Uh, Alright, let's try this again. Undefined, undefined. No! Refresh. Okay, JavaScript console in Visual Studio. Blog post. Hmm. Blog posts. First item is undefined. Oh wait, it's an object, and the object has a thing called value. And uh, I one day will learn to read, and that will be very useful. Yeah. True story. So, ah, look at that, awesome. Right, so we're getting data out of light switch onto an HTML page with JavaScript. Only thing is I don't want this. So, and I don't actually want to worry about passing it down. 
Huh. What should we do? I wonder if I create a query here on the server. I can ca call that query from the client. Because that would be really useful. Um, if not, we'll have to come up with something a bit more original. Um, blog. Published blog posts. Published blog posts. Um, we want to filter on this. So where uh, is draft is equal to false. So it's no longer draft. And sort by published date and the newest ones on top, please. So it'd be decent. Okay. Um, so I wonder if that exposes that somehow. It'd be really cool if it did. I don't think it does. I can't remember ever seeing that. It would be awesome though. It would save a lot of logic in my mind. And I don't think I'm going to be that lucky. I mean, what I could do here, because this is Odator, is I could say, uh, question mark, uh, filter, I think, and is draft dash equals false? I think I saw it too back. There's the first one. Is draft, yeah. There's a way to do this. Like you can actually put this up here. Is, is filter is a query? Oh wait, it might be a uh, dollar filter. And there, now look, now it's breaking. That's a step forward. Um, false. Is draft not equal? Uh, is draft should be equal. Do I need a dash equals? False. So you could do that there, but the problem is I don't want to do that there. I mean, it's nice that you can do that sort of stuff, if you can remember the syntax, but that's not what I want. Um, what I want is money. That's what I want. That's what I want. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, that's actually not what I want. What I want is... What I think I'm going to have to do is build a server-side piece of logic to handle that for me. So let's go and do that. We'll do that quickly. Um, I wonder how long I've been recording for. Hopefully not too long. Hopefully not bored. Left. Anyway, global application class, global ASX, blah, blah, blah. Thank you all. We'll come back to you all. Next at new web API controller. Uh, we'll call this blog controller. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, yeah. And get rid of all your nonsense in here. And get rid of all of that. And get rid of all of that. And I can't remember what the syntax is here. Conveniently, I did a talk at Take It with this exact piece of code that I need. Uh, documents. Uh, this is why being a presenter is fun, is because every so often you go, I need a piece of code. And it's like, I know where that code is. I did a demo with it. Um, and you can just find it at the piece of code I want. And that should go, see, this is why I do this thing, so they never remember, like, three minutes later. Uh, application startup. So there. And then I need to add in namespaces so of that. And that one needs that namespace. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. Look at that. Done. Controller built. Or, well, mapping to con controller built. So now what I want to do is uh, public get. Uh, I, um, hmm. So in here, using light switch application, um, I want an I enumerable of uh, blog posts. Yeah. Let's do that. I enumerable blog posts. I don't think that's right, but anyway, I'm sure it should be blog post. Okay, whatever. I can just be on the getter. Then I can say using our context is equal to light switch application dot application current. Once again, I did this stuff at take it, so I don't have to think about it now. <laughs> there we go. Cool. So there we go. 
you go, server application context. Then I can say in here, server application context, uh, data workspace, application data, because that's the name of my database, blog post set, haha, <laughs> look at that. And now I can do all kinds of cool things in here. Um, let's add a link back in here. I really shouldn't have like cleared out all the namespaces at this point. Um, because it might have been more advantageous to have it all done there. Um, and then only cleared it up when I was done. So, X. Alright, so that is there. And then, get query, execute, which will run that. Actually, I'm going to tell me when I get blog post here. Okay. And then I can use just normal link and I can say, our result is equal to from um, p in posts, where p dot is draft is equal to is equal to false. Select p. Uh, it's not assigned. Ugh. Let me just like pick one language in my brain. Select p, and then I want to array because I want to execute then, and then I can just return results. Cool. So that should be fine. Now I can get my usings. Okay. Awesome. So now what I should be able to do is run this to show you what's going on. Okay, so we can go out of here, out of the HTML client, and we should be able to say Oh, wait, I might have made sense if I remembered where I put this under the global ASX. Come on. API. This will be API slash blog. And it drops the controller bit because that's how these things run. And that exploded. Blog controller. Blog controller. We're so hopeful for that. Oh. I'm pretty sure I needed that light switch namespace in here. I'm almost positive. Yeah, I'm actually light switch. See, joys of doing demos that are similar to what I want to build in real life. Using Microsoft Dark Light Switch. Maybe there's some weird thing that the namespace adds in that I'm missing. API, whack, blog. Still not. SSS object on the current thread. Okay, but I'm not doing threading yet. But you keep telling me so. Ooh, look at that. Open. What do you want to give me? Open, open. Save and open. Oh. <sighs> You're just doing sitting now. Run. Open. Save. See, now you're just being s messing with me. Um, okay, I have no idea. I have no idea why it's running on different thread. Let's do this and see what happens. Let's add a breakpoint and we'll try and debug through it. Okay, so we hit that and that's fine. And that's fine. And I'm guessing if I do that, oh, look, that was fine. Uh-huh. And that's fine. And that is now just an array of one item. So that's fine. And that's fine. And then it blows up. I have no idea. It's blowing up like at the return there. I don't even know where I am. Like in some deep dark point of this thing. Um, hmm. What if I just do that and it will return it as an I knew ball? My gut tells me that should explode because it's all closed off and gone at that point. I'll try this like one more time, and I might give up for today, 
and do a bit of reading about this tonight. Yeah, I think so. I, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to read up about this tonight, and that, in my mind, should have all worked. I don't know what I've done wrong. So I will stop the video in a moment, um, and thank you for giving me your time today through this video, and hopefully you've seen some of the interesting things. And then tomorrow, what we should be able to do is get a decent API built that um, only returns the published posts, and then we could change our JavaScript to use that and show only the one post, and then we should be happy. Good. Great. Thanks so much again. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.